Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Um, today I just wanted to stop in and share with you what I'm doing for my 12th grader um, as far as his curriculum is concerned. So if you are homeschooling a high schooler, this is the video for you. And even if you're not, this would be a good video for you so you'll know what is ahead. So here in Tennessee, we're, uh, we're we have certain requirements, and I'm sure that's all over, but we have certain requirements um, in order for our high schoolers to graduate. So I'm just gonna read from the paper. We have to have four years of English. We have to have four years of math, three sciences, um, three, it seems like, uh, let's see, a year of US history, a year of physical education, a half credit or a half year of health. Then we have to have, with the particular um, umbrella school that we are in, we have to have Babel. Uh, we also have to have one social studies if you are college prep, if your student is college prep. We have to have two years of, Sp not Spanish, but two years of foreign language. And then we have to have one, two, three, four, five, I think it's five credits. So we're in our 12th grade year. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about what we're using along with um, how we're fulfilling it. So for our first one, it says, well, I'm just going to go by the sheet. We need English 4. So I want to share with you what we're doing for English 4. Now, English 4 just means 12th grade English, and it, it includes all language arts. So our language arts consist of reading, writing, grammar. And, um, and that's fairly easy to get. Uh, but this year, and we've always used like um, easy grammar and daily grams, um, things like that. Last year, we started using, I think it was not last year, year before, Life of Fred Language Arts. And that's one that we are going to continue with. So to fulfill our English 4 curriculum, um, we are going to continue on with our Life of Fred Language Arts. Now, he did not finish all of these books in the um last year or anything like that. Now, it's only 19 chapters per book, but we had a very um, hard year last year, just personal family things and um, things like that. So what we're doing is I'm going to go through the book, the books and see where he needs to be. And from there, that will be what he has. Um, and then he will go through each book again. Now at 19 chapters of book, he could easily go through these, but because I'm adding more to his language arts this year, um, I feel like he just needs to start wherever he needs to start. Okay. Now, the next thing we are going to, the way we're going to fulfill our language arts for high school is that we are going to use um, the thinking tree. Vikings vocabulary. Now, I am very excited about using this. I actually bought it last school year, and I bought it last school um, last school year to use for our 12th grade year because I wanted him to be a little bit more relaxed. Um, he is a natural, um, he's natural, it's natural for him to, well, let me not say natural. He, his, his strength is English. So, Writing comes naturally, um, spelling comes naturally, vocabulary comes naturally, but he doesn't like to write. So I thought if I grab this, that it will like pique his interest to write. Now he can, he will type a little bit, but he's just not a heavy reader or a heavy writer, even though he does both very well. So I chose this because of course it's thinking tree. It's for advanced high school students. And the word advanced, it really doesn't mean anything to me. I think any child can learn anything in any level. Okay, but if you see this, if you can see the font to that, I just absolutely love the way it is written. I mean, when it says Viking vocabulary, it is actually a story that he's gonna have to continue writing. Um, I want you to take a look. Oh, I think I just showed there. 
I love the way it just looks, right? As homeschool moms, parents, if something looks good to us and stuff, we grab it, right? I know that I do. I'm like, oh yeah, that's going to work. And then most of the time it wind up now not working. But it doesn't mean you can't use it with other students. And here's more in here. So that is by The Thinking Tree. And it the whole title says Advanced Language Arts for High School Students. Biking Vocabulary Building Exercises and Creative Composition Through Historical Fiction. So we are going to be using this along with our Life of Fred to fulfill that language arts or English for curriculum. And the very last thing, well, actually not the very last thing, um, we will still tackle easy grammar. Now, easy grammar is easy for Israel, um, but I figured that it doesn't hurt to um, practice. We always, I always tell my children, I've always told them, practice makes progress. And so even though you know it, get extra practice because there may be some things you don't know. So yes, Easy Grammar Plus Student Workbook, we will go through this. And for me, what I grabbed, I love these books, don't you guys? <laughs> like if you have not seen the Everything You Need to Ace books, please check them out. Hashtag not sponsored, okay? But yes, anything um, that's like this, I mean, they're small, they're compact. Um, I think you can get them at a good price. I waited till a lot of these were on sale, like at our local bookstore. I believe it was Books A Million. And I got some, you know, some for $5 um, and some a little bit higher. But I just waited till they got, you know, until they went on sale. And so I have all of them, I think, American History. Yes, I think I do. Except for the, no, I even have a math one. So yeah, it's one, two, three, four, five books total. But anyway, what I've done is that I got this book so that it can be a reference for Israel and for me as well, because it has everything in here basically. And it says middle school, but middle school, the terms don't bother me. If I look through a book and I see that it is relevant to what we are doing, guess what? I'm not dumbing him down in any way. What I'm doing is using the resources that I think that are best for him. And that's what we should do. So the titles don't mean anything to me as far as grade levels. But what means something to me is that I can use it and implement it and put it in a way that any child can definitely understand it. So this is going to be a reference that we use. Say, for instance, that he hasn't covered poetry very well. Um, I can go into here and there it is, poetry, and we can just read about it. So it doesn't matter if it's middle school. It doesn't matter to me about any of that and try not to let it matter to you. Put your children where they belong and just try to get out of the mindset of where they should be or need to be or what people or you know institutions think they should or need to be the point of homeschooling is to do what is best for your children okay so that is all of our english our english for language arts that we are doing now with this language arts with the viking vocabulary it did say comp composition so it's going to be some writing now if writing doesn't come natural for your children, whether they are younger or older, check out copy work. Using a, a you know a excerpt for from any kind of um, book, um, the Bible, any book, and they write that out. Guess what? You are definitely you know helping them with writing, spelling, punctuation. 
all of those things. So no matter where they are, you know, copy work, dictation means you read it and then they do it. I did, I did that a lot with Israel. Um, and that way you can check their spelling as well um, and see if they understand a lot of grammatical terms and a lot of punctuation and things like that. So no matter what, they are getting what they need. So language arts, arts, and English in general comes, you know, it's something you can do. Don't shy away from it. Okay, so the next thing he needs is he needs a math. Now, for 9th, 10th, and 11th, he had all algebra. So when I say all algebra, we know that once you get to high school, everything is kind of divided. So um, he had pre-algebra for eighth, I mean for eighth grade, but I continued on for ninth grade. Then he had algebra one for 10th and algebra two for 11th. So usually what would happen um, is that you would go into geometry. If you were gonna do an algebra or pre-algebra, you would go into a to geometry next and then finish up with the algebra and maybe geometry or it just depends on what you're doing trigonometry calculus or whatever but Israel isn't very strong in math and I didn't want to break up um, the math in that way I thought what was best for him is just to continue on doing what he was doing and we just continue on naming what he was doing. So pre-algebra, the beginning concepts, you know, went on to the next one, the next, and the next. So for his final year of homeschooling, I've decided to go with business math. And the business math I'm going with, guess what, it's not my life of Fred which I think Fred has life, um, life of Fred financial choices. We, I may think, I may have that to be like a reading for him just to read, but he's at the point now that he just want to finish up and of course graduate, right? So, but the map that we have, that I've selected for him is by a company called, or an author or whomever, Landmark Baptist uh, freedom curriculum. Again, that is Landmark Baptist Freedom Curriculum. The next few set of books are going to be by that author and I will link that below. But we are doing the business map with them. And I love the spiral bound um, workbook uh, that they have. If you see this right here, this is actually like a code for what grade level. So I love that they do not like add in the actual grade level as far as the way we're used to it numerically. I like that they speak it in code because if a child um, is having problems with uh, self-confidence, but they need to repeat something or go into a lower grade than what they are, you don't want their confidence you know, messed up or you don't want them to feel down. So I think this is perfect. So all he knows is that he's doing business math, right? Or whatever that number is. And so, uh, but yes, so with his business math, it actually has two books, first semester book and the second semester book. I love the ease of this. And when I say the ease, I mean it is planned out. It's first divided by weeks. So there's a total of, in the first book, is this the first? Yeah. The total of um, 18 weeks in this first book. So it's going by week, but it's also going by a breaking up that week into a lesson a day. No more than that. Because I think once we put, not unless they are really solid in it, um, and as I look through this as far as business math, they have its fractions, decimals, percents, um, a little bit of rate times time. It's talking about, actually, let me read a little bit of it. So we have percent, more about percent, and more about per percent. That's week three. Then Owning your own car. Now, who would not want to teach that? I mean, that is a real life thing right there. 
owning your own car, owning your own business. Um, I'm sorry, if you hear a little one, that's my niece. <laughs> so um, I figured that this is the perfect time for me to um, do this video. Uh, more business math applied to income, the Christian's financial ab obligations to God, banking. Now, what I want you to understand is that this is a Christian curriculum. Not right now, please. Okay. You can kind of put that right there. Okay. So I'm doing a video. I'll be done in a little bit. Yes. Thank you, love. Okay. Take Kingston. Kingston's our dog. Go Kingston. Okay. So, um, so you want them to, you want your students, if you have high school students, of course, you want them to be prepared for real life. And a lot of time, most of the time, curriculum is missing the real life stuff. So like, if you're going to be in algebra, if your student's going to be in algebra, guess what? They, um, are kind of like, not that you don't need algebra, you do. It, it is very important. I, I'm all about math. But they also need the real life work. So they need to know about taxes. So you get in here and you're going to learn about um, banking, budgets, insurance, health insurance, taxes, real estate, utilities. That's all in this first book. In the second part or the second semester of our business math, which is the last 18 weeks. They're going to do more taxes, federal income tax return, trade discounts, cash discounts, prices, and bank loans, filling out sales and purchase forms, business businesses in their operations, uh, more about business, retail gross profit, profit and markup, more about markup, investments, promissory promissory notes. Let me say that again. Promissory notes and bankruptcy. I mean, like really bankruptcy is something that should be in the high school curriculum when it comes to math. Okay. Making wise decisions, auto insurance, insurances, new development in business. And of course, in each of these, you have your tests quizzes and reviews. I'm going to have to definitely do a walkthrough of the books because I love it. Now, I am telling you that it is Christian based, but when I'm saying Christian based, it has scriptural references in here. It doesn't make it irrelevant. Um, for us, I love the fact that it is basing things off of scripture and showing where they should be wise. But if it if it's not for you and if that bothers you, this would not be the curriculum for you. But please take a look at it first. So I of course I will link um I will link the website down below where you can order this. So that's what we are doing for our year four of math. Now, the next thing we're going to do, well, actually, no sciences this year because we finished science. We took um, biology. I actually teach biology. Well, I, I teach all of this, but I did biology labs and continue to do biology labs here at home. Um, physical science and chemistry is what he had. Um, he already had his history, physical education out of the way, um, half of credit of health out of the way economics economics is our next one now i believe that economics and government they are requirements here in tennessee for a student to graduate high school now you can get economics in several kinds of ways i'm um, doing what i've done for all this time i've learned to um, put things together for myself and do what works for my kids. And so, but Israel doesn't take well to learning when it comes to video. And so with one child, it was video based. We, we took care of economics. Another child, um, actually, one, two, I think all three of my older children, we did video based economics. But with Israel, it's just not something he wanted to sit through and watch. 
he said he would rather read. And I was like, what? <laughs> but the same company that I got the math from is the same one that I'm doing the economics and government with. So we are doing economics with Landmark Baptist Curriculum, okay? And, you know, I'm, I'm not as excited <laughs> about it, but I still like the format of it. I still like the fact that, and I have to go back to the math and show you guys how, I, how the math is set up. Um, but I still like that it is weekly. Here are our table of contents. I don't know if you guys can see that. But you have week one and what you need to do. Uh, week two and what we're going to read and so forth. So it's still divided by weeks, which is so helpful for me as well as very helpful for Israel. And, you know, um, because he needs to become independent. Now, when I say he needs to become independent, I've all, he's always been independent. But when it came to lessons, he still loved me being there. And even though a lot of times, some, some of the time I'm just sitting there, I was able to like stop or he's able to stop and ask questions. And so I was still very present. He is still like that now, but I'm trying to create a little independence where he can go and do things on his own. So, um, and that's what this is. So I still like that. Guess what? That is weekly divided up into daily. And let me show that to you guys really quick. Like this is lesson. I'm, now I'm excited. <laughs> this is lesson one. So it says week one, lesson one. And I love that because you know what? He only needs the lesson a day. I only need the lesson a day for each subject because we have so many subjects. So I don't want to become overwhelmed and I don't want to make him overwhelmed. So I go by it exactly how this is. Now, anytime that he miss anything in here, he takes a weekend, maybe a Saturday or a Sunday, and he would do it. And any of this stuff that we do, we try to make it up. Um, so this, I, that's just the beauty of homeschooling, right? But yeah, so week one, lesson one, and the lesson one is, you know, defining the, the vocabulary, which a glossary, guys, is in the back, like glossary. Nowadays, everybody just asks Google or Alexis or Tamara or something. I don't know, but everybody just asks some machine or some device. But to actually have a glossary in the back, look at this. Ha <laughs> ha! I love it. And with all of their books, they have glossaries in the back. So they actually have to use that skill. So I am old school mama. I love dictionaries and glossaries. Yes, it is easy to say, hey, Alexa, what is the meaning of this? But you know what? To take time and actually flip through a book and actually find it for yourself is awesome. But yes, economics is with Landmark. Now, the other part is government, which is also a requirement for high school graduation. And we're doing that also through Landmark. It's set up the very same way, glossary in the back, quizzes and tests included. And I'm going to tell y'all something sweet in a moment about this, um, this company. I'm going to tell you something really sweet at the end. All right. So another thing that he needs. Uh, okay. So he needed government and economics. Yep. Economics, government. He needs personal finance. Now, I do have a personal finance, and I will pause this in a moment and grab it um, before the end of this video and show that to you. So that is a requirement here in Tennessee as well. Um, let's see. And then you know what? Um, 
That's all he needs. But did I stop there? Mm -mm. <laughs> you know why? Because the beauty, of, again, of homeschooling is doing what is best for your children. He is interested in building gaming computers. Okay, so I don't know what teenager um, is not interested in those things because I know in my household that like he's interested and my oldest son is interested, but not so much in building, but playing, right? But because Israel is interested in building computers, I figured that it was very important for him to have a foundation in computer literacy. I know that computers are all around us and we all basically know how to operate a computer. We know how to get online and find what we need to find. And even, you know, there are websites to show you how to make a web, you know, a web design and all this stuff. But building computers, it, that's a little bit more. I think the, he needs that foundation so that when he does start to actually do that, he knows the beginning. And again, I'm using Landmark Baptist Christian Curriculum, Computer Literacy. Can you see that? So, yes, this right here is very well done. I mean, he started this four weeks ago. He is on, yeah, week four, lesson three, lesson two. Week four, lesson two. Now, I don't know if I said this, but in all of their, um, in all of their uh, books they have, the quizzes and tests are inside of the book. Well, let me say this. The quizzes are. The test and all of those things still come with the curriculum. And I'm going to share that at the end. But yes, computer literacy is what he's also doing for this year. And I know that usually the last year, the 12th grade year, is usually like you breeze through it. You don't have much. But you know what? I, sometimes you have to go over and beyond. Sometimes you, um, you just can't follow what everybody else is doing. I mean, every child is different. Every family is different. So if I saw that he needed home economics or something, he would get it. Um, actually, he did get it. <laughs> so, but you know, I just want everybody to know that every family is different, that every um, person, every child is different. And it's okay to tailor things to your children. And if I'm squinting, it's because I don't have my glasses on. But Guess what I am doing with him this year? I'm so excited. How many of you remember in school that home ec was basically a requirement? Um, there was woodworking, cooking, um, all those kinds of things. Well, with this curriculum in, in their whole selection, they have different things. And guess what? Shop. <laughs> Shop. Can you believe this? I was so happy to see this and even more thrilled when I opened up the book. Let me read you some things that he will be doing this year with shop. I'm so excited. He will be doing week one, there's a project. Then week two, safety and work habits. Week three, hobby home use, and profit. Week four, basic electricity. I mean, like, basic electricity. Week five, electrical tools, materials, and supplies. Um, week six, electrical repairs and installation. Um, week seven, plumbing, tools, and uses. And it goes on. He's going to be doing heating and air, excuse me, heating and air conditioning, um, basic machine shop, learning all the tools, welding. I mean, and it goes on. Now, this is a half credit. When I say half credit, it means it's taught for half of a year. 18 weeks, and it is full 18 weeks of shop. So what I asked my husband, I said, honey, if I teach this as far as book-wise, can you get with your son and, you know, do all this? Because you have all these tools. And, of course, his answer was yes. Because it's something he loves. And so, I want to show you, like, I look through here, 
And I was like, oh my gosh, my husband uses that tool. Oh my gosh, he has this in his toolbox. And I'm just gonna show you. I'm like, okay, where's the page? Here it is. I was like, oh my gosh. I know a lot of those. And the thing is, Israel knew a lot of them too. He just didn't know like the names. But guess what? Like we home moms, like homeschool moms, we love to turn everything into a curriculum, a learning moment. That's what this did. But it is so necessary to learn to work with your hands and know the tools of some trades. And that's what I'm excited about. Shop. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I think that wraps it up. Um, let's see. He had all his electives. Now, he's going to graduate with more credit than he needs. It doesn't mean that he is, like, advanced or anything like that. It just means his mom just went a little nuts and added a little bit more in there. So, and that's okay. It is, I'm definitely preparing this last one to graduate and make sure he has everything he needs. But also, I have to remember that in life, he's going to continue to learn. And that's what this journey has been about with all of my children. Even though 12th grade came and they walked across that stage and I gave them their diplomas, they still are learning as they grow. And you know what? I am too. So if you like this video, please like it, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment. I will try my best to answer any questions I can. You know, what are your children using for this year? Especially if you have high schoolers. Let me know what you're using. I would love to read a lot of your answers. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to be notified of any videos that I upload, please hit that little bell in the corner. Thank you so much for dropping by. I am so glad to be back. As you can see, I'm a little bit hectic, a whole lot of collected, right? But most of the time, both. Thanks, you guys. Bye.